Happy Sunday to you, everybody. Hope you're having a great day. No rest for the weary here as we've got a very active January continuing here with yet another threat for wintry weather. Hi, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice. Watching next week, we've got Arctic air in place. And yeah, here we go again. We're talking another chance for shows showing up on all three of our computer models here. We can't get too granular with the details, as you know, just yet. But what we can do is tell you about the pattern that supports that and how we get there, folks. So what we have going on is an Arctic blast is moving our way, which does show signs of being even more pronounced and cold than the last Arctic blast that we're in the middle of right now. Highs in the 30s, lows in the teens and 20s, and this pattern when you're this cold at an active time of winter does support yet another wintry weather threat, which we're ironing out for next week. But caution, we're seven to nine days out. We're in that time frame where all that we can do is recognize the pattern. Now, I get the tea leaves here. I know what you're thinking. I didn't get the amount of snow that I thought I was going to get in my town. I get it, folks. I'm just as frustrated. I wish I had more snow to sled in today with my kids. Uh, here's what happened, if you're wondering. <laughs> South of 85, my forecast was for one to two inches. There's one in southern Anderson County. There's 0.7 inches of snow. There's a half an inch of snow here. We had officially 0.8 inches at the GSP International Airport. So I was off by about one to one 1.2 inches in some of those areas. I get it. That's no great. Uh, that's no good. Uh, what happened here is I was off by about 15 one hundredths of an inch of moisture falling as ice instead of snow because you multiply out liquid times 10 and that equals out snow. So roughly 0.15 of an inch of moisture fell as ice. And unfortunately, what happened here was there was a warm pocket of air just above our heads that was 32.3 degrees. That's how the temperature was there. And that led to that snowflake falling and then melting uh, and then landing on the ground as freezing rain. So in these areas, here's the ice totals. We had a quarter of an inch of ice in Greenville. Greer had 0.24. Greenwood had almost three tenths of an inch of ice. So what we had happen here is the liquid that fell fell as ice instead of as snow. And folks, uh, you know, if I were to go back and do it again, I probably would forecast the same thing for you because I had the data at my hand and at my disposal, and that's what we have. So moving forward, what do we look at here? Well, this week's going to be getting closer to near normal, late week into next week, temperature-wise. We're going to be cool, upper 40s, low 50s by the end of the week, near normal. But next week starts another Arctic outbreak. We've got another pronounced blast of colder air coming in while at the same time, uh, we are looking at an above average precipitation forecast. You know what that means. We've got more threats to iron out. And I've got a couple of dates here in particular that we're looking at that could provide for those threats. Let's look at the cold air first because you got to have that. Well, this week gets cold, no doubt about it. Look at this Canadian cold air coming down. This weekend, we get a little bit closer to normal. Then it's reloading. Oh boy, look at this. Sunday, Monday, next week. Look at those pinks spilling into the United States. That is significantly colder air uh, below zero zero, in fact, in the Midwest. That spills down south. Martin Luther King Day, we're talking about Monday, January 20th through the 23rd, 24th, 25th. That whole week next week looks to be Arctic in nature, uh, and that sets the stage for what could be very cold. So this week's cold. I mean, lows in the teens and 20s. Highs, though, do get back out of the 30s to the 40s. And then by this weekend, uh, Saturday, Here's Friday. We got 50s, even close to 60s showing up in Georgia. So ah, a little bit warmer, right? We can take a little bit of a breath. But then look at this going into next week. We've got sub-zero temperatures in Kentucky on uh, the Midwest. And then Tuesday, we're back to the teens. We're back to the 20s for lows with highs in the 20s and 30s as well. What does that mean? Well, let's look at the broad pattern here first. This is the Europeans' North Atlantic Oscillation, showing the possibility of cold air blocking in, cold air locking in and allowing for something wintry perhaps to come our way. It dips negative like it was this past week as we go into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week. So we've got an opportunity here of about four or five days where 
things are favorable for winter storms yet again. The European, the GFS, the Canadian, all picking up on it in some form or fashion. This is the European model moving forward into next week. We are dry this week. In fact, it looks really nice. Nice break. Saturday, we get some regular old rain. Looks like we're in the 50s. And then, and then comes the Arctic air. With the Arctic air in place Sunday into Monday, uh, as we go into MLK Day, we're talking about the potential of snow moving in that night. So could the kids get not a three-day weekend, but a four-day weekend? Could you get a four-day weekend at work? This European model says absolutely. Almost the same track, almost the same low, uh, but this time perhaps if the models are right, with colder air. This would be Tuesday, January 21st. This would be nine days out. So we're seven to nine days out. Caution, red flag, red flag. I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen. Neither can anybody else. So be careful with those deterministic runs that you see floating around on the internet. Four inches, five inches, six inches. All we know is that there's a pattern. All we know is that the models are showing there's a system. And we know that they are showing that it will fall as snow or rain. Looks like less ice in this situation. Looks like there's less drama in the temperature department. But hey, we're eight, nine days out. We know drama can manifest itself like it normally does. Okay, uh, that would lead to a very cold rest of the week where we would have highs in the 30s. So uh, there is the possibility of that being impactful. And yes, the models do show that it would be accumulating snow across the south. ID5 corridor, same story. Could be several inches of snow if those models are right. The European shows a similar track. All that I care about at this point, I don't care about specifics being equal on the European and the GFS. All that I care about is does the GFS show a system like the European or vice versa? And yes, they both show a system in the same time frame. This GFS is more Tuesday night instead of Monday night, but nonetheless, it shows a system rolling much weaker. We got a 1,010 low, uh, which would not be conducive for much snow. Uh, but nonetheless, it does show a low. It does show wintry weather. And it does show it being super, super cold. Uh, this GFS model would paint uh, some snow far south, but not a lot in the Western Carolinas. Uh, you got to take that for what it's worth at this point. When you look at the average of all of them, which is what you have to do when you're looking at uh, long range forecasting eight, nine days out, uh, the European model shows a 30% chance of accumulating snow at GSP. It shows a 60% chance of accumulating snow in Asheville. Atlanta, about a 20% chance. Charlotte, roughly a 30% chance. So what are the all 51 different runs? I showed you a lot this a lot during the last event. Um, you know, about half of them, you know, half of the ensemble members show uh, some accumulating snow. The recent deterministic run shows uh, four and a half to five inches of snow, while the average sits around two. That far out, two is a good average. It, it, it goes by how far out we are. And remember when I told you, you want to see these two lines next to each other. If they're wildly off from each other, you know you don't have uh, a forecast to hang a hat on. And, and I wouldn't expect to have a forecast to hang my hat on this far out. But nonetheless, you've got uh, two different scenarios showing up here, but both show snow. Same story on our GFS models. There's 30 different runs of them, and they've got the potential for active weather in that Monday, Tuesday time frame, but also on this GFS model, it's got something coming in Friday the 24th as well that the European kind of hints at a little bit, probably three or four of them out of 50, roughly five or six out of 30 of the GFS show it. So we're going to have to watch this very, very closely. And it's a pattern that does bear watching because when we're talking about being this far out from something, we have to watch out for the fact that it could turn into uh, another winter weather threat. And again, we're seven to nine days out. All we can do is recognize the pattern at this point, and we can't tell you more specifics. If you appreciate my no-nonsense approach to forecasting, I'm transparent with you folks. I'm going to tell you when I get it right. I'm going to tell you when I get it wrong. And I'm going to, more importantly, tell you why. Why did this happen? And what can you expect for your town? Uh, please give this uh, page a subscribe wherever you're watching from. Uh, otherwise, enjoy the nice week ahead. We've got relatively low drama. It's going to be chilly out, but actually getting closer to normal by the end of this week. It's next week, MLK week, that we've got Arctic air in place and another active pattern that we need to keep an eye on. Have a great Sunday, everybody.